Hello everyone, thank you for joining me again for a Facebook Live. We have a really special treat today and I can't wait to introduce our special guest. But before I do that, I want to remind you that this is November So Confident and it's sweatshirt month. And we are so excited about our project for the month. I just filmed the video last Friday and the video will be available to you on the 19th of November. And here it is. This is in the blush pink color. We're using the Picasso top pattern. And this time we are giving it that deconstructed look with raw edged applications of the neck binding, some patches that have been stitched on with a twin needle, a new variation of the pocket instead of a patch pocket on the outside. It's a patch pocket on the inside with some raw edge slit openings. We have outside darts. So this is a really fun and surprisingly quick project to make. We're getting into that time of year when we're conscious of the fact that we don't have long, long hours to sew. We have a lot of other things to do to get ready for the holidays. And so we're looking at comfy, quick clothes, and this falls into that category. So check us out. Sign up for the yearly program, So Confident, or the monthly class. You're welcome to take that and you'll get your prep letter, and then also the video comes out on the 19th, and then the Q&A session is now after Thanksgiving, because normally it would land on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, and nobody's doing that, including me. So it'll be the following Monday at noon and six o'clock Central Daylight Time, or Central Standard Time now, isn't it? We're back on whatever time zone it is. And anyway, noon and six for me, I'll see you whenever, whatever time it is for you. So, um, Linda Wardlow is our special guest today. And come on over, Linda. I know that some of you may know Linda. <laughs> She's been here a long time, in and out of the workshop, working with us, not working with us, shopping with us, you know. But we go back a long way. So I'm going to give a little, little brief introduction, and then I'm going to ask you some very tricky questions. <laughs> OK. <laughs> But we do have a lot of associations, uh, one of which my mother and Linda taught together at Topeka West High School. And Linda's a home economics major from Kansas State University. So all three of us, Aaron and you and I, are all K-State graduates. And I mean, I, if you're in home economics, is there any other school to go to in the country? Well, no, no. Of course no. not. So at any rate, you're an educate, home economics educator. Now it's called something else, human ecology, or whatever they call it now. I've lost track. So at any rate, you taught with my mother. I'm going to ask you to tell a story about my mother and what my mother told you to do one weekend. Well, her mother was just wonderful. And because we were colleagues, we became friends. And of course, she visited with me a lot about Linda a lot, because she knew that you know we had this uh, relationship. And so whenever a new book or anything came out, it always that Linda had finished, it always ended up in the teacher's lounge you know, for, for all of us to peruse and, of course, purchase. But I do remember one time we were walking to the car together after, on a Friday night and, she, and just visiting about what we were going to do for the weekend. And uh, she asked me what I was going to do. And I said, well, I'm going to clean my closets. They're just a mess. And she took a hold of my arm like this. And she said, no, you're not. Do not do that. You never cl clean closets on the weekend. You're going to clean closets when you retire. Do not do this ever. <laughs> And so I took that as good advice, and I'm sure I went home that weekend, and I didn't clean any closets, yeah. I'm sure. That was, that was my mother. She always had advice for um, everyone. Uh, she was a, a, an amazing woman and a really strong woman. And, yeah, but yes, you, she was. But I, you would ask me to come and speak sometimes to your classes yes. at Topeka West, yes. and I always enjoyed that. Sometimes about interiors, yes, mostly about interiors, interior design, actually, yes. because yes. that was my first career, and that's... You taught like an interior design class yes, or something that like that? Called, yeah, it was called yeah. interior design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Well, then your husband, <laughs> who is one of the greatest men ever invented on earth. <laughs> I, he is. He's just so fantastic. But he and I went to the same church growing up. And my father was the Sunday school teacher, and Charlie was in his Sunday school class. That's right. That's right. Except... 
his parents would drop him off and a friend of him off for Sunday school, and then they'd sneak out. Well, <laughs> Linda's dad chased them out of the church and down the street one time <laughs> and told them they had to come back to to uh, church was a hilarious no. story, and I'm sure it's true, and doesn't surprise me at all that my husband would have done that. <laughs> or that my dad would have done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, aside from all of that, uh, Linda retired from teaching a few years ago, and I don't know, were you bored? What, what happened? You, you walked in here one day, and somehow we connected, and you came to work part-time here, uh, just because I think you wanted to feel the fabric. Well, maybe, maybe, and I just kind of decided I wanted a little, little more to do. And I think, well, you had called me one time and asked me if I was interested, and I said, no way, I, okay. I, I wasn't going to do that. But then you call, Then we talked another time. And I, I came in. I and, caught you in a weak moment. Yes, and I said, well, okay, I think, I think I might enjoy that. And I did enjoy it very, very much. It, it was great. I worked like two and a half days a week. And, but it was hard and, work, too. It was. You know, those, those hefty. <laughs> those bolts of fabric and cutting and lifting and shoving and you were on your feet a lot yeah. and it was not easy so you retired again that's right from that's right. the sewing workshop that's right but we see you all the time that's right <laughs> but before we get into what you're into now I, I, one thing I've never really asked you and this is like the lawyer who should never ask a question that you don't know the answer about mm -hmm. but I'm gonna ask it anyway I, I don't really know your history with sewing when you started to sew and if you've sewn your whole life or if you took gaps, were there gaps for you or how, how? Well, I think I started sewing probably when I was eight or 10 years old through 4-H. Okay. And that's, and my mother sewed also, but then we had 4-H leaders and that's when I really sewed. And I sewed all through high school. I loved, I always loved sewing and I would always want to stay after school and sew, you know, my home ec teacher loved me, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but then, and then I continued to sew even after I started teaching, but then there came a time when teaching became, I would just seem so busy all the time, and I became the costumer for the theater department, and then my sewing became uh, altering and, well, you know, just making things at work and you don't do a good job, and I really felt like I'd lost a lot of my skills because, you know, it didn't matter, and I, I remember a student telling me one time, oh, Mrs. Wardlow, you're the Velcro queen, you know, <laughs> so, you know, just get them in something and hope that it'll last through the performance, and so then I really, I didn't sew for myself at all until then again when I kind of retired and then got started again. Yeah, well, you're an extra excellent sewer and I don't think I've ever, I will never get used to the word sewist no, by no, the way no. you and I are sewers we're yes. just good old sewers yes. and we grew up with really strong fundamentals wouldn't Correct. you say yes definitely uh, back in the day we were talking about this earlier back in the day when a, a, a first project in ninth grade would have been a blouse with a collar and cuffs and yes. vents and buttonholes and all of that and my one of my projects in high school was a tailored suit with uh, bound buttonholes and notched collar yes. and lined and, you know, the whole thing. Yes. And we've gotten away from that, and, and we think it's a shame, of course, but we're old fuddy-duddies, apparently. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> but I was saying, and I think it's true, that those tailoring skills that you and I learned from a long time ago have come back to us and are really, I use them all the time, even though I'm not making tailored clothes anymore. But just to set in a sleeve, for example. Yes. I, I set in a sleeve like I used to do it in a wool jacket, even if it's cotton or polyester or whatever it is, and my sleeves just look better. So I don't know where people go today to learn about true tailoring, but hopefully in the process of what we do here at the Sewing Workshop in our tutorials and so confident programs you know there's little snippets of processes that have been kind of pulled out from some good old tailoring skills and you know you and I are not in sewing for the fast quick project no not, not what you're gonna wear Saturday night no, no. we are willing to put some time into yeah. it invest some thought which brings us to why you're here you came in my office a couple of weeks ago, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what you brought in, but you brought in something that kind of struck a chord with me, and, and it reminded me that over the last couple, three years, you have been 
really being creative with your sewing. Now you may not say that you feel all that creative all the time, but <laughs> so you have inspirations and you draw yes, from, yes. so tell us how you find your inspirations, what you're doing to, what, what strikes you that makes you rip out the page or save it on Pinterest or whatever. Well, I, I suppose I look at things that I think are going to, that I'm going to like are going to look fine on me. And I, I look at magazines a lot. I look at catalogs a lot. I come here a lot. Uh, the So Confident is wonderful. You know, you get so many ideas. And I look at Pinterest. And I don't, I mean, I don't, I try to look at something. And if I like it, then I think, now, how can I use Linda's pattern to make that? And that's, that's what I do. Yeah. Do you use our patterns because you like them or you feel obligated or they, <laughs> <laughs> or do you find that they are either basic enough or versatile enough that, that you can make some alterations that go along with the look that you're after now? Uh, yes, all of the above. All of the above. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't, uh, I can't imagine any more using any other pattern. I mean, I can't say that in the last... 10 years I haven't, but I'm never happy with it. And I know of the, the size and the fit of this and everything. And I just, and I feel comfortable with the directions, which I think are wonderful. You know, it's a little intimidating sometimes when it says stitch exactly to the dot, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, but basically, you know, I, I like them a lot and they're, but I'm, but I do follow them pretty carefully, I'm, I must say. Yeah. You know, okay. I do try to sew exactly to the dot. Yeah. <laughs> so you come in here with pictures and you have fun playing around with uh, you, uh, fabrics. But you made a comment yesterday when we were talking that if you were on your own completely, uh, you might not uh, find quite the right combination. It, you, you like the association of bouncing something off someone else and someone else saying, oh, you should try this, and you go, oh, I don't know, yes. and then you do it. <laughs> yes. and, and I'm usually happy with it. And you're usually pretty happy I've never it. thought that I was very, I had a very good eye to pick just the right thing for what I kind of maybe had in my mind, but I don't get it together right. And so I have learned through the years that if I have a picture to look at or I come and visit with you or that sort of thing, then I usually put things together much better. I don't like making things and then not liking them very well and not wearing them a lot. I like it when you make something and you love the pattern and you wear it this winter and next winter and the next winter, yeah. you know. Yeah, so lifestyle-wise, you're retired, but you're quite active with your knitting club, and you deliver mobile meals, yes, yes. and you have lunch with your friends, yes. and I don't know what else you do exactly, but you're out there. You're not, you're not at home. No. no. And so, all the time. And so, you like to wear, while casual, something that sparks a little bit of interest and comment. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Like, what do you have on? Yes. Like, what is this? Well, this is the Zane top and um, Picasso pants. You know, Picasso. We all, yeah, we all of us that have Picasso pants, that's yep. what you wear all the time. And uh, I saw this in a. So here's uh, her inspiration picture. And I saw that and liked it, and I thought, well, I think I could use the Zane to make that. I didn't go looking. For for a, something to make the zane out of. This came, you know, this came first and I thought, "Oh, I think I could use that pattern." And so that and I've had made this before a couple of times and I always liked it and yeah. enjoyed it. I don't so, really need to show this because yours shows it off perfectly, but in a solid color, you know, you don't see the details in quite the same way that you do this, but your combination of two fabrics mm -hmm. there is just fantastic. Two mm -hmm. jersey knits. Yes both of which uh, are stripes, obviously, and you've run the stripes in different directions, uh, horizontally on one side and vertically on the other. Turn around and we'll see what you've done on the back. You have a solid on the back. You did do, I noticed this this morning, that you do have a keyhole opening in the Zane. I wonder if you would have needed that. I wondered that too. Uh, after all was said and done, because the pattern does have that yes. in the pattern. But you've made it in a knit versus a woven, and so it's possible 
you wouldn't have needed it. It doesn't matter that it's there, but I'm just, and, and the piece is short sleeve in the pattern, Correct. I believe. Yes, so you've yes. lengthened the sleeve. Yes, yes. Yes. But here, stand kind of front and center, and I just think this is just really charming. There's nothing better than just black and white, and of course you have the perfect necklace. And the perfect shoes. Come on back here so they can see the <laughs> whole. About, we talked about I shoes. I talked yes. about this, but the whole look is really fantastic. Well, thank you. Yep. And Picasso pants are everyone's favorites around here. That's for sure. Well, let's show some other things. Let's let's pull this out because this was in development for a while. Yes, it was. Yes, it yep. was. So the picture that you had, this was your inspiration picture for this garment. And you came in here with this picture, I remember this, and you chose these two rayon and wool boucles in the burgundy and the blue. But tell us about the rest of the elements in the fabrics. Well, I, um, I think that I, the truth be known, chose these colors because I think I had uh, I think I had this blue, you know, in my stash. Well, I'm really not a big stash person, but I think I had this, so that's why I chose this. Okay. And I uh, a and I asked Linda about doing this. I thought maybe it was a little bit odd, and she said no. And then we looked. Oh, I think then we were looking for fabric for the pockets. Right. And she said, Well, why don't you just knit your pockets? And I thought that was a good idea. So I just well, knit they're, my pockets. These are fantastic. And so you knit these little squares. Yes. Now, yeah. I could probably do that. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I'm there. not much of a knitter, but <laughs> I think I could knit a square. Yes, yeah. And, yeah. and they're both different. Yes, And yes. you use sort of variegated yarn. Yes, yes. And this was just yarn I had, of course. You know, I didn't. Right. And these were, I think, these were just practices from seeing what it was going to look like. And then I... They said, oh, well, that'll work, and so then I kind of... So did you them. put these on by machine or by hand? Uh, machine. Machine. I did. There you put go. Them on by machine. And each button is different. Yes, and yeah. that was that I did, too. And the buttons, we've been lucky enough to get to travel quite a bit, and when we, uh, when I, when we travel, lots of times I try and find buttons or something that can be made into a button. Uh, I think this one, however, I think... Maybe it even came from here. But like this one, these, and this one here, I think this was a piece of jewelry uh, from some place where we were. And we purchased those, and then my husband dills, uh, drills holes in them, and we make them into buttons. I, I, I don't think that one's, this one might be. But, th you know, they're... Well, they're so, even, and, and you've done the loops with the little uh, bit of leather. Yes, yes, yes. And then you've, t you've put Tied. some yarn through that mm -hmm. one to hold it on. Yeah. Yeah. And then you added velvet yes. for the collar and this band. Yes. Did you have any trouble? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what yes. kind of trouble did you have? Well, it wouldn't, you know, it moved on me. And then I think, I don't, I was thinking maybe if I used Fusy Web probably, but I think I did something else too. I, I think, think you might have used uh, spray adhesive. Oh, I did. I did. Yes, I did. Yeah, That's like right. sulky. Um, yes, I did. Um, I used to know the number, Sulky KK2000. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, but you would have to maybe put some paper here and some paper yes. here so you're not maybe spraying just and everything. I remember, yes, yes, I remember all of that. that yeah. <laughs> all right. and, it, uh, and, of course, you had to practice a lot. You know, you had to do it several times to yeah. make sure you could get it. So but I love the velvet. Ahead. I love the combination of the textures. Really beefy, hunky <laughs> textures on the pocket and the patches here, a more subdued sort of boucle uh, texture here, and then this lovely semi-iridescent velvet. What a fantastic combination this is. I've enjoyed it. You know, when I thought maybe it was a little odd, <laughs> and I didn't know how much I'd wear it, but... Um, well, but you but wore I, it to your I, knitting club. Yeah, I did wear it to knitting one day, and they, they seemed all to like it, and I and, it. And so I thought, well, maybe yeah. this isn't too weird. But I think, I think <laughs> your, your knitted pockets are a really fantastic idea. I know a lot of you out there are knitters, or at least you own the yarn. I own yarn. And all the needles, but I, I'm not much of a knitter. But, uh, but I, I think this is a pretty fantastic idea. I mean, you could even do knitted sleeves. Oh, you could, yes. Yeah, these are pretty really much fun. rectangular if you wanted to do yes. a large square for the sleeves or even the knitted collar, just any, any portion of it could be the knitted part. So I think that's a brilliant addition yeah. to this. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it. So, you know, the, the Lon this is the London shirt. Right. We didn't mention that, We didn't that, mention did that. That's <laughs> right. So the London shirt, you know, out of the... Out of the envelope, it looks like this. 
It also happens to be the same pattern we're using for the October burrow stitching project. But, you know, it's a very simple, easy to fit garment and makes a wonderful jacket in a heavier fabric. So, really a great canvas, I guess we can call it, for your art to wear. All right. Well, let's see, what's next? Uh, let's do this one. So you hold that. Okay. So here's your inspiration for this one. Right. And this was kind of billed as a denim sweatshirt. And um, I, I just liked the design and thought it was kind of fun. And I didn't, I, I don't need real dressy clothes, you know, I need pretty casual things to, uh, for my lifestyle, you know, this would be something you'd wear to a friend's house on Friday night, that sort of thing. I'm sure I'd wear it with jeans. When I, um, and this, these fabrics I just had, I had, I purchased this new, but these all I had, this was a pair, really a pair of jeans, and I put this fabric on the shoulder and it didn't seem to have any, I don't know if you'd say definition or it was just too flat or something. So I put uh, a layer of uh, flannel underneath it and then quilted this. And then I, I thought, well, that just gave it a little more oomph. Yep. And so then I thought, well, I'll just quilt this little piece that's on the pocket too. Yeah, so this is a pocket. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I didn't put a, I didn't know how, this, was, this is the Hudson. And it's usually in knit, and so you pull it over your head easily. But I, I, it's pretty. I can get it on and off fine. But when I started, I thought, oh dear, I don't think I'm going to get that over my head. And I thought about putting the slip back here and chose not to. And I, I think I can get it on and off okay. So you uh, created a facing. Yes. Yeah, so rather, I just made a rather facing. Rather than yes. a binding. Right. I did. And it. I that's did an easy facing. thing to do. Yes. I and um, you might have shortened the sleeve. I'm not sure. Maybe take. I'm not uh, sure. Maybe no, not. I did not shorten the All sleeve. Right. I did. But, but last night you were still finishing this. What were you <laughs> yes. doing? Well, I was trying to decide what I was going to do at the bottom, and I ended up just uh, putting a couple of rows of stitching and then just fringing and you know just yeah. pulled it up. And I, I like the way that looked. Yeah. About. I didn't want it to look dressy at all and I use this this is kind of the selvage on this right. uh, I use that so I thought well it kind of went well I like actually that. think that yours is a lot better than your original oh well that's nice I, I, <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with this one but this is very uh, kind of worn and tattered looking and yours has a, a certain refinement to it and and on the other hand it's it's uh, it's very casual as well yes yes so love it yeah, and Want to get in on some details? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Great. Okay. So that's your Hudson. Now let's show. So this is the swing tee. It doesn't come any simpler than this. <laughs> Short sleeve, a little bit of a swing, a line to it, knit T-shirt. So you came into. You were at a workshop here, I believe. Correct. Yes. Was it Samantha's this workshop? Was Samantha's workshop, where we she brought all kinds of dresses, and then we and with variations, tons of variations, and then we chose um, right. a pattern to uh, make a variation of it. So this was the picture that I had for that. Right, and, and so, which I don't know whose idea it was to use a swing tee. Maybe it was Aaron's. I'm not sure. Maybe it was yours. Um, well, Maybe I, it was Samantha's. I don't yeah, know. I don't remember either. But this is the final swing <laughs> tee. And I think this is amazing. So you've used a crinkled linen yes, gauze here. Yeah. You've done, this was an overlay. Yes, yes. Now, I remember this originally was, you were thinking about inserting this. Yes, yes. And that became, from an engineering standpoint, a little bit problematic. Yes. So this is now applique. Yes. And this... Um, and I even think you might have backed this. I think so. And it's raw edges here. Yes. Yeah. It's, we to heck with that turning thing yes, when you can do a yes. raw edge. Yeah. And this is a, like a rayon chalet for the bottom. And, so, and then the bottom has the, the uh, crinkled linen on it again as a band. It's pretty long on me, which is fine. And yeah. the sleeve has been lengthened and widened a little bit because the sleeve on the swing tee tends to be a little bit Tight. narrow. So you've widened it and added this tab, just like the picture, and then put the woven binding on that. So from swing tee 
to swing dress. Now, did you just come out? I, I think I did. It's pretty full at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Instead of using this original circumference, 20 inches longer, yeah. you've just carried I, I those lines going. on yes, down. So. so what do you wear with this? Well, I wear it in the summer, I think, and I have um, just a chunky, you know, wooden necklace like this that I wear with it, and then I usually wear some kind of worn out Birkenstock shoes, <laughs> yeah. which, look, I mean, that looks good in the summer. Yeah, you know, that's a great center. look. And it's pretty, pretty long. Does this so. harken back to your hippie days? <laughs> yes, maybe so. <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> Not that I think you were. I don't know that I was ever much of a Yeah, hippie, exactly. We but, K-Staters weren't hippies, were we? <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah, but this is, what a great dress. Yeah. I, you wear it in the summertime, but honestly, I think this is, could be year round. You could put a turtleneck or a t-shirt under this long sleeved with boots and wear this right now and into even uh, cooler months. So I don't think it has to be just for summer, but fabulous dress. All right, let's see here. We've got this little ensemble. This is West End. West End pants in a uh, tropical weight wool uh, with a little pinstripe to them. And this is your Eureka top. Correct. Now, the, the how to do this Eureka top is in our blog. We've, you've all seen this, but she color blocked this. You call, she, you color blocked this. So the Eureka top kind of looks like this when it's right out of the package. Kind of a um, little bit of an oversized boxy shirt. But when you cut it up like this, it just totally changes how it looks and feels. And this, the how to do this is on our blog. When you go to our website and click on blog, there's a directory on the right-hand side, and you can search Eureka Top, and the how to cut this up and do this is on there. But this is, I bet you wear this a lot. I just made that this summer, and I have worn it a lot. I've just worn this with my Picasso pants, of course. Yes. And I've worn these. This makes it a little dressier when I wear this. But yeah, yeah that, I have worn it a lot. What kind of shoes do you wear with this in the summertime? Uh, black sandals, uh, probably maybe what I have on. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Black. Really cute. How tall are you? Well, five one if I stretch. Yeah, if you if you stand up straight, yeah. you're five one. Well, we have a lot of women who are of your height, and they're always asking, you know, how do our patterns work for people who are shorter? Because Erin's taller than I am. I'm not short. I'm not tall, but I'm kind of average. And then you're on the shorter side. Yeah. So we think our patterns work for a lot of different And looks. we talked yesterday, you know, that a lot of times I think about proportion when I'm choosing things. And that one, the one dress, when we were trying to decide where this band, when it, where it should be, um, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to look sh too short from here to here or too long from here to here and trying to decide where it was. And so you can make it work for your... Well, but you I, used your dress form. I did use my dress form, yes, I did. And you've set that at the height that you are. Yes, and yes. Yeah, so that, if you have a dress form, I think dress forms are tricky in terms of pure fitting yeah. with them, but they certainly work if you're wanting to check proportions or gen general character of a garment on you. Yeah. I think they're useful in that regard. But in terms of fine-tuning a fit, I'm not, yeah. I'm not good enough. Um, so we showed the dress, so we have uh, one, one or two left. Let's see here. We have your, where to go here? Oh, yes. So, you, I can tell you've been carrying this picture around a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when you came in with this, too. And it's, it was a little hard to tell what was really going on with this vest, because you could tell that there were some lines and some detail of embellishment on the surface of it, but we didn't really know what it was. Yeah, correct. So we took the peony vest pattern, and I have on the original peony, so you know what it looks like when you uh, make the what pattern. We, what have we got going here? What do we, oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. And so you've, you've just altered the length. So the left side you shortened. The right side, I guess you shortened the whole thing. Whole yes, bit. I think so. so. It's a, yeah. And then tell us about what you did on the surface of it. Well, I have a... Uh, had a gal that was in our my knitting group and she's a spinner 
And so she had spun some yarn for me, not necessarily for this project, but for, uh, well, for another knitting project. And so I thought, well, I think I could do, I could use that yarn to make those designs on it, which I did. And then I couched the yarn on there. And I really didn't do, have a, I started out with having a plan, kind of trying to draw on the, um, you know, what I was going to do, but that became too p problematic. And so then I just kind of laid it on and s started going. I'm almost like you do that free motion quilting, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, was, um, and of course, I had it, this was before, let's see, had I cut this out. I would cut it out in, in big, you know, way bigger than it was going to be, and then, and then cut it out again after I had put on, on this on it. And, um, I used this uh, thread is what I used for couching, and I did use a couching foot. And again, I practiced, practiced, practiced on trying to figure out what I was going to do. And it's this little teeny tiny, it's almost like dental floss. And um, it, it doesn't stretch very well, but I mean, it, it's okay. Yeah, I, it, it is hidden, but you weren't happy with the fact that it drew up just a right, little bit. Right. So this kind of invisible thread is maybe a little stiff or unforgiving. Uh, and so you probably, you might have been able to choose a sort of neutral color to couch, or you could have done it by hand. Yes. You know, yeah, but yeah. who wants to do that? I, 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 Me, but nobody else. <laughs> so, but at any rate, uh, you, you, you seem to be not so happy with a couple of little things about this, but honestly, this is fantastic. Okay. And there is nothing to be, uh, anything but happy about this. Yes. And I love the way you even use the stripe ET as the t-shirt. You know, you really went after this look yeah. from top to bottom. Yeah. And in my opinion, way cooler than what this would have been. And we don't even know what that would have no, cost I had you purchased it. And these are great little buttons, little mm -hmm. uh, toggles that you picked up probably on some trip someplace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a great look. But you know, vests are, vests are one of those fashion items that kind of go in and out. And they're currently really coming on strong again. This is the year of the vest, I think. And, and I love vests. I love a third piece. I like, first of all, the sort of warmth without being too much. But I like the way it's, it's like an accessory. It's just as good as a necklace, in a way. Yes. So vests are cool. Well, those are all, this, I believe those are all of That's your good. inspirational pictures. But I just want to show one more thing because we uh, were so confident a couple of years ago. We maybe it was last year. It was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. We introduced the Crossroads. Have you ever made the Crossroads? I have not. Well, maybe you are this weekend. <laughs> My mother would let you sew on the weekend. She might not let you clean your closet. But you can sew. <laughs> so this is the Crossroads, and it, and it has seams here with a pocket in one of the seams. I think this is a really interesting way to do a pocket. And our variation, Sewing Workshop's variation of the Crossroads is to do this color blocked coat, which was inspired by many, many color blocked coats in ready to wear. And we have this project plus two others, two other variations of the Crossroads in what we call a compendium that is like a magazine, and you get the, all the instructions of how to do this coat, how to do the two other garments using the Crossroads shirt pattern. So that is going to be something we're offering this week. All right, so let's look at some fabrics. Okay. All right. So we pulled out some fabrics that are in the spirit of the season and are very much in the color palette that you really like, even though you have on black and white today. When you, when we, if we were to hold up all of your garments, well, let's just do that. You know, you can see that you have a certain sensibility of colors that you really like. Here, you hold this and this. So, you know, we're, we're into a, a color theme here that you really like. So, we pulled out some other fabrics that you would like, that you do like. And that could uh, make any one of these garments, the London shirt, the Hudson top, the peony vest, the Eureka, the Zane, any one of these. So here is the actual boucle 
that is in the London jacket. This is the rayon and wool boucle. So it has a little, it's a knit, but it's not super stretchy. It really feels like more of a woven. Uh, but this is a fabric that we use and have used for years in lots and lots of colors. And we have lots of colors. We're going to be doing another Facebook Live down the road showing more techniques of how to use this fabric. But for now, that was the uh, fabric that's used in the vest, or the, the jacket. So then this is a, a little lightweight sweater knit, polyester and spandex. And gosh, I can see, I could see a, a Zane in that, oh, yes. or the Eureka. Now we pulled this out because if you're not a knitter, <laughs> this has all of the characteristics of a hand knit piece. So you have the couched roping, so to speak, in yarns, or you can use the other side, which is a felted oh. side to this. So you can use either side and then combine it with this fabulous rayon viscose chalet. This could be the bottom of the dress. Here's a brand new denim that we have. Just came in, 100% cotton, organic cotton, actually. That's a nice color. It's a nice deep, not black. It's very indigo, very dark. We have our birds. I made a shirt out of this this summer, and I, I'm crazy about this particular fabric. But all those great colors. And, you know, combine, just put it with anything. It's just, this is the kind of thing that you just sort of blindly, you close your eyes and you put it together and it turns out great. All right, now what do we have? So then we've got some um, cotton gauze, double gauze here. Put it with the paisley. You know, this looks kind of reminiscent of your dress. You know, this is gauze sort of thing with the paisley with it and, and we, this is the exact thing <laughs> yeah that's exactly what it is and or use go into the green tones with it the avocado here's another chalet in a floral and this is a chalet as well in a i i love this because i used to do bargello as a kid Oh, yes. And this, to me, reminds me of classic needlepoint Barcello. Really, really pretty. So, and then, of course, we have the fabrics that you have on, the two knits, the stripe and the two stripes, basically. So, do we have any questions? Um, can you go back through and uh, name each pattern? Like yes. Each All right. All right. So this is the, my hangers are all, why don't you hold Here. that a second. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we have swing tee, swing tee dress. Okay. We have Eureka top. And Eureka top variation with West End pants. I can take that probably now. And I have on the peony vest and peony vest variation. This is the ET with long sleeves. I have on the trio T. We both have on Picasso pants. Mm -hmm. All right, London shirt, London jacket. No pattern modifications here. You know, we didn't mention, I did the seams on the outside and trimmed them here. Yeah. You know, instead of yeah. all of them, I didn't. I love that look. So that's London. And Zane is what you have on. Hudson top has the 
turtleneck to it or funnel neck or uh, cowl neck, that's a better word, and this is the variation in denim. So you can make the Hudson in a woven or a knit. I think, and the crossroads shirt and variation of the coat. Mine? Yes. Uh, my peony vest is made out of a silk, a Japanese silk. And I got this piece of silk at the Puyallup trade show up in Washington many years ago. It was just a one in a little package of kimono fabrics. And is it lined? It is lined. Mm -hmm. The peony pattern has the lining pattern included. I sometimes wear it not buttoned and just let it hang as well. I really love this vest. It has a big, deep armhole to it. Okay. Um, what kind of sneakers do you have on, Linda? Oh. <laughs> my, well, I wear these sneakers all the time. These are my um, Yamamoto sneakers in black and white. They go with everything. Oh, <laughs> the, it's well, a they're, they're, they're the lightweight uh, ponte. Yes, they're, it's wonderful. They're, they're wonderful. Mine are viscose linen, yeah. and yours are ponte knit. Yeah. And what is the fabric of the black peony vest? Uh, that oh. is black wool. That is a worsted oh. wool. The stripe, what do you have? Yeah, just a nice black pant weight lightweight tropical wool. But it could be linen, it could be cotton, it could be wool, it could be knit. And I uh, lined it also. Yes. Oh yeah, with a color. Mm -hmm. That looks nice. Um, what size, around what sizes did you make, Linda? Or I make mostly the extra small. Uh, I just made something recently, a small. Uh, but it wasn't this. Uh, usually extra small. Yeah. And do you shorten your Picasso pants? Linda Wardlow? Yes. Linda oh, Wardlow. yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm, I'm she shortened. Yeah, yeah, we need to repeat the question sometimes. Yeah. You do yeah. shorten your Picasso pants. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important when you're shortening, shortening things or making things fit for shorter people that you, you alter it where, they, where it's suggested you alter it. Don't just decide to take an inch off here, an inch off. Make sure you do it here or here or wherever it is right. or you mess up your proportion. It doesn't work very well. True. Yeah, we had a, a lot of questions about people didn't know if they should make the Picassos because they were shorter. So they liked seeing oh. you make the Picassos. Oh. So. Yeah, I had the Picasso pants are one of those pants patterns that I see on Facebook and we get emails from people that say I resisted making a pair of Picassos for years, didn't think it was for me. I made them. I love them. I really have never heard from anybody. Maybe you just haven't told me, but I haven't heard ever anyone say I cannot wear those. I, and I have several pair of diff, all kinds of fabrics. Yeah. There's my favorite summer pants. Yeah, me too. Uh, Linda Wardlow, what kind of dress form do you have? Oh, my. Um, what kind of dress form do you have? <laughs> yeah, well, a black one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's not anything very fancy. I've had it for a long time. I'm sure that I ordered it from on uh, from Amazon or something, and but it it is nice enough that I I could fit I could make it my size. You know I could put the bust and the height and the, you know that sort of thing and the hips and so forth. But it is not anything fancy at all. I I can I have no idea what the brand is. I've had it you know for years. One of those things. I might I might tell my story about my dress form story. I don't think I've ever told this story. Uh, but we had uh, a gov a female governor here in Kansas a few years back, and, um, and I was asked to make her inaugural gown. And she was not particularly, I mean, I could see her when I really needed to, but you know, I didn't want to just bother her all the time. And so I got a dress form 
to exactly her measurements all over. And I used that as the fitting form for this dress. And I remember going out to the governor's mansion to fit for the first fitting. And I had fit that to this dress form. It didn't fit her. It was like, it just didn't fit her. So that's kind of what I'm saying, that I was able to, uh, to check some general proportions and scale, but the actual nuances of fine fitting are just not going to happen because, you know, sh you breathe and, that, and the form doesn't breathe, or you're scrunched, or you're, you, there are just some things you can't replicate in a dress form. So I caution you to use a dress form as a serious fitting tool. Now, I'm going to get all kinds of emails from the dress form people <laughs> <laughs> about this, and I, maybe I need to take the class. But uh, anyway, that's been my personal experience. Uh, Linda Wardlow, can you name specific catalogs or other sources of your inspirational pictures? Well, your uh, favorite. My favorite is Artful Home. Artful Home, yes. I, yeah, I love that catalog. Um, oh, there's. Oh, we looked up one, uh, one yesterday on the internet called. Uh, Bud Cud, Bud Cud, Bud Cud, B U D K U D, or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. I've never or heard. Bi of, I've never heard of it either. But they had a lot of interesting things. And isn't isn't there another one that starts with the P, like uh, popular or some, poetry? Yeah, poetry. Poetry, and yes. then Coldwater Creek. Yes, yes. You okay, like that? I like that Mm -hmm. uh, and I look on Pinterest too, but you know, you look on Pinterest and you see a lot of of our patterns, and you know, True. mentioned there too. Yeah. So, um, what is the fabric for the um, Crossroads jacket? Um, is it orange? But I think they mean the red. Um, oh, this. Silk. This is a uh, red silk that we no longer have. It's more like, it's almost like a file. It's not, but it has a, it's like a raw silk. Not a dupioni necessarily, but um, has that characteristic of a slub, a little bit of a slub to it. Uh, the color block to Eureka, um, can you pull that out? What is that fabric? This is a cotton jersey. Maybe, was it cotton or viscose? I'm not sure. It feels like cotton, cotton jerseys. It's, I think it's cotton. Yeah. And then can you bring out the Hudson, um, the gray one? The original one? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just repeat what that does do. This is a knit, yeah. like a burnout knit, mm -hmm. which we wish we had about 10,000 yards of, and we don't. Right. It's one of our favorite Hudsons. Mm -hmm. I, I got this out this morning, and I thought, you know, I'm going to wear this. This is, this is so, the styling of the Hudson is so in right now. This oversized, top that maybe you wear with a longer t-shirt underneath and then some slim pants or Picasso's, whatever. <laughs> we have Hudson pants that are also in the pattern, but um, to me, this top goes with jeans, slim pants, wider pants. The Hudson pants is a great pattern, too. I have a lot of Hudson's. Yeah, I, I, I have a lot of Hudson's as well. Is the boot play dry clean only? Well, the boucle uh, can be washed. It does change the character of it. It roughens it up a little bit, and it's nice. I would do a sample. Um, now, this is a jacket I would never put in the washing machine, no. uh, ever, ever, because of all the combinations of textures and fabrics. But, the, but yes, the fabric is washable. I just don't happen to care for it quite as much, but it's definitely washable. Um, when you did, Linda Wardlow, when you did the swing tee as a dress, did you curve the hem on the tee? Uh, yes, I think maybe I did. Um, uh, I think I, well, it doesn't kind of look like it now. I, I, I remember getting this on here and making, feeling like it was pretty straight and looked okay, was kind of an issue. So I think I maybe did. I, I little, can't I, tell. Yeah, it, I, it, in a way, it looks like you did not, but, I, but I'm not sure. Um, here it is. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. 
Well, if, she, if you curbed it, it's pretty subtle. Okay. Because <laughs> we're standing here and we don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, don't forget to repeat the question. Yeah. Um, is the denim a stretch denim? Is the denim a stretch denim? No. This is 100% organic cotton. How does the crossroads shirt differ from the Mizono shirt? The crossroads shirt and the Mizono shirt are almost alike. Um, the double gauze, would it work for pants? Would the double gauze work for pants? I wouldn't use it for pants. I think that it's too wispy and doesn't have a good hang to it, and I also think it would bag out. Um, oh, Linda Wardlow, did you, what did you, did you do anything to the neckline of the black peony vest? Did no. you do anything to the neckline of the peony vest? I don't think so. I think it well, I guess if, I mean, if we did. Uh, well, you buttoned it, you buttoned the entire right front yeah, over. Yeah. But that doesn't change the neckline. Yeah, I don't think so. And is the crossroads similar to the L shirt? Is the crossroads similar to the L shirt? Not at all. The L shirt doesn't have the segments. It has a short collar. Uh, the collar on the crossroads is squared off on one side and rounded on the other side. So it's a totally different piece. Different, it has a cuff on it. The, the L does not have that. Uh, if you're wanting to compare the L, compare that to the Mix It shirt. They're very much alike. Uh, Linda Lee, what uh, size Picassos do you make? Uh, Linda Lee, what size Picassos do you make? I make extra smalls. Uh, Linda Wardlow, what are your shoes? <laughs> Linda Wardlow, no, what are your shoes? Well, um, they look yeah, like ballet yes, slippers with yes, capizios. Yes, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't. I, you know, I don't know. I could take them off and look inside, I guess. But no, they're probably from Zappos, if the truth be known. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eureka Springs. Yeah, well, yes, yes. I'm yeah, we used to do a workshop down in Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and we'd always leave the workshop to go shoe shopping at about 4.30 on a Thursday. And It was dangerous. Yeah, very dangerous. Yes. Um, have you ever added pockets to the Picasso pants? Have we ever added pockets to the Picasso pants? And yes, you do them in this front seam. Right. Patch pockets. Well, there you go, right there. Yeah. There's no side seam in the Picasso's. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, I do. But in the back. I did it in this one. But, oh, I, have, did it but I have done it in this. Oh, I've done you did it in this too. I guess you could do it in either seam. Yeah, well, this was probably, um, well, I don't know. I, but I know I have them in here, here too. Yeah. Probably not thinking when I did it, and that's why it was one pocket. Well, oh, you're wearing your pants backwards. <laughs> yes. No, I don't know. I like pockets, though. Yeah, I like pockets too. Have you, how about the Picasso pants for a size 2X? How about the Picasso pants for a size 2X? The largest size in the Picasso pants is an XXL, and that is similar to a uh, 2X, but the two, uh, true plus size would have a different shaped crotch. So if you have a pant that you already like, you might be able to transfer that to the Picasso, but it's, it's a pretty easy pattern to expand because it has uh, these front, front seam, back seam, you've got some seams to work with. They're each pant leg has three seams and it's an easy pant to um, alter. It, I will say this, that the reason I wear an extra small in these is because I think the pants run a little bit big. Um, I have very heavy calves and I'm always worried what pattern would be best. Uh, she has very heavy thighs or calves? calves? Calves, what pattern would be best? Well, I think the Picasso, the Hudson, the West End, um, the Valencia pants, all would accommodate heavier calves, I believe. Uh, Linda Wardlow, do you do a petite adjustment between the shoulder and the armpit? Do, uh, Linda Wardlow, do you do a petite adjustment between the shoulder and the bust? No, but I, I do uh, adjustment here usually. I bring this 
and you, know, you bring the shoulders in, but yeah. you don't bring them. We no. don't pinch it up. Uh, well, I well, I've done the more the the round back thing recently. Right. As I age, I do that. You know, but you're not doing that classic no, fatigue no, pinching across no, here. No, but I do this. You know, this from here to here. Um, what is the olive green fabric? The olive green fabric is the double gauze, double crinkled cotton gauze. The same as this. Yeah. I love this color. You know, we're, we live in Kansas, obviously, and I was driving to work this morning and noticing the incredible mm -hmm. color. It's beautiful. Right now, <laughs> every tree is a different color of gold, orange, red, green, olive. Looks like this. It absolutely it's looks like this. It is stunning. This is why you live in Kansas. <laughs> The fitting solo class is on Craftsy, yes. You sign up through Craftsy on that. And do that so I can get my three cents. <laughs> can we see the pockets on the red silk jacket? The pockets on the red silk jacket, this is the crossroads. So here's a seam. And this pocket is inset in this seam. So it's like an opening in the seam. It's a really interesting construction. That's a more oversized, make a larger person look larger. Uh, the question is, doesn't a, a pattern uh, like the Picasso pants that have the shape, does it make a, a larger person look larger? I tell you what, that's one of the things that I think people are surprised about. Um, these pants are flattering. And maybe you're, you're not accustomed to that look on you. And you've be, become accustomed to wearing maybe slim pants because you think you look slimmer, but I tell you, you gotta try it. I think it'll be surprising. Now, fabric-wise, you want fabric that drapes. Don't make them in corduroy. Don't make them in duck cloth. <laughs> Don't make them in um, you know, heavy whatevers. But the, the perfect fabric, the most slimming fabric is the fabric she has on, which is Ponte Knit, the lightweight Ponte. And I think the viscose linen that I have on is pretty flattering as well. Okay, you want me to get it off the rack, or you want to? Mm -hmm. well might as well keep going and do everything. All right, <laughs> here's the floral. Rayon Chalet. Cotton gauze. Crinkled silk. Rayon Chalet, cotton double gauze, we're going to start at the top or the bottom? All right, so this is organic cotton. You can tell it's denim because it's, you know, the two colors. Is there a stretch in that or is it just 100%? No, this is 100% organic cotton. Okay. This is a, um, a, a, a viscose, but it is a twill weave but it's very drapey. I love this combination of color. It's really interesting. And this is the couched yarn that's felted on one side. This is a lightweight sweater knit, so it's a gray heather background. And then these are printed paint, painterly designs on it. And this is the rayon and wool, 60% rayon, 40% wool boucle. Can we get out the ones by the window? So this is the, this is rayon chalet. I think this is a, this is what I call a happy print. <laughs> I don't know, I just love it. And then, are, oops, there it goes. <laughs> this is the fabric that's in that portion of your t-shirt. You've run it. Oh, that's interesting. You've run it on the diagonal. Oh. Did you remember you did that? 
Sure. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. I just lost my I mic. do, now that you, I do remember doing that on purpose because I thought I didn't want it to be the same as this. Well, yeah, I, it's a, I yeah. hadn't noticed yeah. it until just now. It's a fantastic idea. Yeah. And then this is the same knit stripe. Cotton knit. Just lost my microphone, so hopefully you can still hear me. <laughs> what other colors do you have in the boucle? Oh gosh, I'd have to count, but I bet we have eight or nine colors. And maybe Betsy can put a link. Yeah, Betsy can put a link. Um, yeah, but we have a lot of colors of this. And we're going to do a special Facebook Live on just that kind of fabric. That's probably within the next month or so. Oh, yep, she posted one. Great. Okay. Um, oh, can you get the red silk jacket out again? Can you see the cuffs? So the cuff is only partially. You want to hold this a second? Um, just lost it. Fall off. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so this is an interesting cuff. <laughs> well, so interesting it won't even unbutton, but um, you can see it's only partially attached. Here you go. There you go, yeah. So it's, it's the same width as the bottom of the sleeve, but only attached for a portion of it. And then the buttonhole is through a folded edge. And that's buttoned. Quilted um, jackets are in vogue here in Europe this winter. Any suggestions for a pattern? Quilted oh. jackets? Well, we had done the Charlie Bomber in a quilt fabric, quilted fabric. Um, I think the Chicago jacket would be great. The Stafford jacket, you probably would want to lengthen the sleeve on that for a winter version of that. Um, well, shoot, the Crossroads would be fabulous. At different patterns of quilting, maybe it's diamond in one and square in the other and vertical in the other, and that would be fun. Um, we could watch last week's show. <laughs> well, yes. Last week's Facebook Live, we did quilted jackets in the Tremont and what was the other one? Oh, the Mix It. The Now. Oh, the Now. Yeah, there you go. Watch last week's video. You're going to get inspiration there. All right. Well, this week's um, sale items are, pattern-wise, we have the swing tee, the peony vest, the crossroads, and the zane. And all four of those are download patterns. And then the Hudson top and pants, and that's print. Then we have the, uh, for tutorials, we have the Crossroads Compendium where you get the instructions for how to make three different variations of the Crossroads shirt. And then we have a free tutorial. If you purchase either the Peony Vest or the Zane top pattern, which are downloads, you'll automatically, in your account, get the Shake It Up tutorial. Now that's a tutorial that my daughter and Alex and I did where we did two variations of a lot of these patterns. The swing tee, or, uh, the peony, the zane, the hudson. So it's just a fun little view of lots of great variations. And that's free if you purchase either one of those patterns. And the fabrics. All of these fabrics. I did have one more question about a gray denim and whether a gray denim would work well with fall tones. Oh, absolutely. A gray denim, to me, gray denim is very neutral and could go with any of these wonderful fall colors. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's a good example right here. This is a gray background on this fabric, and then see all those colors that have worked with it? I think it'd be pretty. Okay, a lot of good. All right, yeah, lots of great questions. 
Thank All you. right. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. You're very you welcome. You were great. Fun. Really fun. We'll have you back again when you've made your next five <laughs> okay. art to wear creations. Um, so we'll see you next week. Actually, you'll see Aaron and Betsy next week. So tune in. Thank you.